Get ready to saddle up, hoe down, lean in for a clumsy kiss, or bow out when you don't get one on another episode of Farmer Wants a Wife, also in another recap corner. I'm Lizzie Frizzle. Let's talk about some TV. (laughs) Season 2, Episode 5 is called Steers, Fears, and Tears. The Steers are the cattle at Farmer Ty's annual roping event. The Fears are the women who are still without solo dates. And the Tears are Reba's. But before the mooing and boo-hooing can begin, there's always more farm work to do. Even if it's raining, like on Nathan's Citrus and Cattle Farm in Florida. He and his three remaining contestants drive golf carts to herd cows from a patch of grass to a better patch of grass. They're going to go up this hill, around the side of the lake, and pass for the gate that we just came from. Does that make sense? As they drive through the rain and wet bits of manure fly into Kristen's face, she realizes that in order for her to commit to farming, she'd need to be in a serious relationship with Nathan. Since his main storyline is about his inability to move out of the friend zone, I don't like her odds. As for Nathan's other contestants, Taylor wants him to move out of the friend zone, and Allie, I imagine, just wants some screen time. Because I think she's only spoken once since she and Nathan talked tattoos in his truck bed back in episode two. In Tennessee, Mitchell teaches his contestants how to shoot an arrow because he wants his future wife to like bow hunting. Sydney proves, again, that she's the best fit for Mitchell's lifestyle by being just as good a shot as him. But I think the bigger story is Kate, who also manages to hit the target, just not as accurately as Sydney the deer hunter. Melanie and Kiana both miss completely, but what they lack in aim, they make up for in neckerchiefs. As the best archer, Sydney is spared from picking up horse poop with the rest of the women. It's unclear if their lack of gloves is part of the punishment or a production oversight. But if I had to guess, I'd say it started as the latter, then became the former. There's no rest for any of the contestants on Brandon's farm in Colorado. While Joy and Grace rake leaves poorly, Annalise rolls up a hose for the first time in her life. It goes worse than you'd expect. Then Reba teaches her how to do it right, and she mostly does. Despite her inexperience, Annalise is enjoying herself because she's trying new things and authentically meeting someone, Brandon, she never would otherwise. I feel like this is a way to get to know someone authentically from a different walk of life in a more quicker and intimate way. Authentically? It's a dating show. Where do you think we are? Meanwhile, Reba starts to lose interest in Brandon, whose growing connection with Joy is growing into the thorn in Reba's side, front, back, head, shoulders, knees, and toes. I left a lot to be here, but I'm struggling because I think he's interested in Joy. It's interesting that he could be so invested in both of us and and really truly like both of us because we are so different. It's a major red flag for me. And I just wonder, um, you know, where it leaves his and I's connection. In Missouri, farmer Ty prepares for the Feral Fall Classic, an annual roping competition he created 14 years ago that's become a popular local event. This time, it's also the location of the season's next mixer. Last episode, we saw the series' cheapest solo date ever. Now, the show is following up with its cheapest group event. As Ty's four remaining contestants help ready the ranch, they wonder who he'll invite on his next solo date. Only two women haven't been chosen. Brooke, who told him not to pick her last time but wants to be picked this time, and Megan, who wears her shoot-ripped jeans to subtly remind Ty that she's got experience with horses. As the rest of the cast travels to Ty's farm for the mixer, we're reintroduced to Sykeston, Missouri, the same way we met it in the season premiere, via this recycled shot of a water tower, which reappears again about two minutes later. Is the town name only printed on that tower or something? Where's the welcome to Sykeston sign? Once everyone is reunited, the women hang with Jennifer Nettles, or at least the ones who are getting screen time this episode do, and most of them are disgruntled. Melanie wants more attention from Mitchell, Annalise wants more attention from Brandon, and Reba wants Brandon to spend less attention on Joy. I don't know if Brandon really wants like more of a mannequin wife. I'm tough as nails. That's just the way it is. Take it or leave it. I'm not totally convinced that I'm the woman for him when he's into women that are nothing like me. Elsewhere, the farmers talk among themselves. So, what about you guys? Have you been doing any kissing on any of your dates? Where have I heard that before? Oh yeah, that's right. From Brandon. You guys been doing any kissing? 
Nathan explains that he hasn't kissed anyone yet because he wants to keep the peace between his contestants, as his contestants tell Jennifer Nettles how desperately they want him to flirt with them. Later, she advises all the farmers to start respectfully touching the women. I, I know everybody's being so respectful, and I know that they love that, but ladies love physical touch, you know, like, and, and I think many of them want to invite that in a way that feels obviously respectful. When the roping competition begins, the cast watches from hay bale bleachers. When it's Ty's turn to compete, he looks so cool, some of the other farmer's contestants probably wish they'd chosen differently. Not Joy, though. She has all of Brandon's attention, seemingly by his design. He sat at the end of the bleachers, so he wouldn't have to interact or share his blanket with anyone but Joy. Or maybe the producers told him where to sit. Farmer Mitchell is also on an end, next to only Sydney. But however Brandon got there, I'd guess producers did sit Reba directly behind him to force her to overhear each and every one of Joy's giggles. If I ever moved onto your farm, would you let me have a pony? Do you want one? Yeah. Really? Yeah. I think it's a lot more work than you're thinking. I know. I think it'd be fun for me. Just to wear this hair and keep me entertained. Keep you busy? I think we could probably find ways to keep you busy. <laughs> the horse. You are coming out of your shell today. I I like it. <laughs> As the sun gets to setting, the cast gets to stepping when the roping competition turns into a hoedown. In between dancing and proving they know the words to several popular country songs, the farmers pull contestants for private talks. Feeling galvanized by Jennifer Nettles' advice, Nathan pulls Taylor because they like the same music. So, in terms of a man's role, is there any like specific standards and stuff that she's specifically uh, looking for? Whenever we have like a little fight, I feel like the guy's gonna break up with me, and I'm just looking for somebody that's like gonna like be there and know like, okay, we can have a fight. Then he kisses her, asks her not to quit the show, and promises her the next solo date. But I do have something very special planned for you. Um, <laughs> if you hang around long enough, okay. um, I would love for you to keep saying. Okay, that's good. I'm excited. Elsewhere, Megan tells Ty that she's closed off, but he says she isn't, so it's actually fine. Mitchell pulls Kiana to compliment her necklace, then kiss her, and Brandon doesn't pull anyone because he'd rather dance with Joy. Are you romantic? <laughs> For sure. For sure. Nobody may know it, but I know it. Yeah. yeah. I think so too. Eventually, some of Brandon's contestants feel so neglected they start to pull him. Annalise wants the next solo date because it'll confirm that Brandon is interested in her, and Reba wants to quit the show. I'm out! I'm going home! What doesn't kill you makes you stronger, but this is brutal. Reba explains that she thinks she and Brandon got off on the wrong foot, probably because their solo date wasn't great, and then she freaked out at the Clemson tailgate. But mostly, she thinks that Brandon likes Joy more than her, and it gives her the ick. I don't know if he is um, wanting a woman that challenges him. I think for the grace of everybody involved, it, it just makes more sense for me to go. Jennifer Nettles reminds everyone to be nice. All that's left now is for you to communicate this with Brandon, and I know that you'll do that in a compassionate and respectful way. There is a, a lady who would like to have a chat with you. I don't even need words, because I, I, I know you have a, a cool head about you and a warm heart. Well, thank you. Then let's Reba break the news to Brandon herself. I don't wanna, I don't wanna steal anybody's soulmate, and I, I just don't think that I'm yours. He responds with this face, and a hug that includes a lot of back touching, because there's never a bad time to start taking Jennifer Nettles' advice. And just like that, another early favorite falls. Meanwhile, Melanie takes inspiration from Brandon's contestants by pulling her own farmer, Mitchell, for a private talk. After spending her night hanging out by the heaters feeling ignored, she wants reassurance that their initial spark still exists, despite their lack of one-on-one -on -one time and his connections with the other women. At first, I think Melanie is in trouble. The last time one of Mitchell's contestants felt their spark fizzling, it was because he decided days earlier to eliminate her. I'm also nervous for Melanie because Mitchell responds to her like he's reading a call center script. Hopefully one day we're gonna have a date and it's gonna be great. If I could do anything to help you out, just let me know, okay? But ultimately, I'm wrong. At the end of the episode, Mitchell does reassure Melanie by inviting her on his next solo date. Ty invites Megan on his date and Nathan invites Taylor as promised. When Brandon prefaces his choice by praising the contestant for opening up, I expect him to pick Annalise for sharing about her late mom last episode. Turns out he is referring to Joy, bravely asking to be bought a pony. 
the lady that I would like to ask on my next solo date, with her opening up and showing me more about herself, I'd like to take and ask Joy. Earlier, Annalise decided she'd quit if Brandon didn't show interest by inviting her on his next date. She follows through by finding her producer as soon as the dates are doled out. For the second time in a single episode, one of Brandon's contestants tells him that she's leaving. Um, you know, I was really patient last week with not getting the one-on-one. -on -one. And I just had it set in my mind that if I didn't get it now, that I would want to leave. And so that's why I'm choosing to leave. He arrived at the mixer with four women, and less than a day later, he's leaving with only two. Truly, the Fall Feral Classic is Farmer Wants a Wife's Red Wedding, and its impact could be just as significant. Two of Nathan's contestants had already quit, and now that two of Brandon's have too, next episode, each farmer will meet a new woman they can invite onto the farm. And for even more drama, the show is adding a fifth farmer. Hey, farmers! You guys come over. Hey, Perkins. He said, I heard you say, hey, farmers, and I'm coming. How will the new farmer shake things up? Can Brandon recover from his heavy losses? Will anyone invite another contestant to move in? If he just brings a new girl back here, I will leave. We don't know yet. Find out in two weeks, because of the State of the Union, on another Farmer Wants a Wife recap. Thanks for watching. In the meantime, if you're so inclined, please like and subscribe. Thanks again. See you in two weeks. Bye. Mm -hmm.